You're watching The Adrian Bauer Project. Hello, 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 hello. Many, many thanks for choosing to click my thumbnail. I talk much my content, very much appreciated as always. And today we're on vlog number one of our Monster Trucks of Rock series. Uh, if you watch the last video, you know this is going to be my big modeling uh, soiree for 2023. And uh, let's have a look at what I did first of all. First of all, I took all the decals out of the boxes and put them into a safe space where they'd be dry. Then I got all the same sprues out of all the boxes, put them into piles, as well as getting out the trailer parts and the cab parts. It was then that old age and cold weather caught up with me. Ignoring the wheels for the time being because I think it makes putting the suspension bars on a lot easier. Uh, we cracked on with a chassis for the tractor unit. Um, I didn't run up against any problems on the ones on the back. It, with the ones on the front I had trouble with and I'm going to tell you why right now. Yes, yeah, so very, very simple model. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to pick this up, but on there it does say uh, it's from 1980 this kit, so well over 40 years old in the moulding. And uh, anybody who's got this kit or thinking about getting this kit, uh, it's more toy than kit. That's the only way I can describe it. If you build this kit yourself, you'll know what I mean. Um, I think all that's missing off this kit is one of those friction engines, really, it is, it is a really simple enough build, the detailing it in it is very, very minimal, so you can either use this as uh, the carcass to do a lot of uh, scratch building, if that's what you want to go, um, if you were hoping to get a model kit that's going to be detailed and, and everything, I'd, I'd advise you to go and look at uh, uh, some other brands that do that do these kind of uh, lorry models because as I said before the detailing on here is very very basic and it is just smacks of click together uh, toy kit something like that that's all I can describe it as so if you're into heavy metal and you you like the look of it but you've not built a model before then there's nothing in here that's really going to, you know, give you the heebie-jeebies. But I'm hoping here, just follow my series of videos and I can tell you little bits to look out for. And this one in particular, as I said, I started off uh, doing the tractor unit sashi, sashi, chassis. <laughs> Can't got my teeth in properly. Uh, the reason being I didn't do the wheels is because I thought if you put the wheels on to the suspension bars, they're going to be awkward, and make it awkward to get them on. And I think that is the right course of action to do. Leave them off till you've got the suspension bars on and in position. So, um, as you can see on there, they are more or less a click fit. I'd uh, dry fit them until you know you've got those those bits there or shake hand in the right place because it does go on and you realize it's not quite in the right place you'll know when it's in the right position because you'll hear a little click and then that's when i'd go in with uh, some glue if you've got uh, you've got some of the uh, tamiya extra thin like i have a couple of dabs of that will do uh, if you're using the glue that came with the kit drive it first so you know where the positioning of these uh, little uh, little clips there go small dab and you'll be okay however like i've just said i did run up against an issue with the ones on the front of the chassis now 
I don't know if you can see, but right there, there's a pin. There's one either side. Now I tried to get these uh, suspension uh, bars on and for the life of me, I could get one side to go in right, but the other side wouldn't. So obviously there was something blocking it. What it was, one of these pins here was too long. So a little bit of sanding here and there, just a little bit, dry fit, didn't fit, took them off, a little bit more off, keep doing that until you get it to go in properly. Don't be uh, tempted to cut those off because they are actually holding up, uh, giving these uh, bars a bit of support. So don't be tempted to cut them off, they are supposed to be there. But rule of thumb, try and get uh, the one that is too long, the same length as the one on the other side. Now I thought, is this just an issue uh, on one of my kits? Is it just an, an overshot? Got the other two uh, units out and it's exactly the same on all three. So I'm assuming, my assumption by, I've got three kits here and they're all the same, that this is an issue on all the kits. So that is something to look out for if you've not made this uh, model before. A bit of trial and error. Lot and lots of dry fitting. Uh, so I'd say be very, very careful. Just sand it down a little bit of a time till you get it the right length and you shouldn't have any problems at all. Um, as we can see, we've got the drive rod in there going into the transmission box from the engine. That was fairly straightforward, nothing to worry about there. And I put uh, the mud flaps on. Now, if you're Worried about these, um, there are some ejector pin marks on them, some release points. I wouldn't be too bothered about them because the wheels are going to hide that. Because I thought to myself, shall I, shall I sand them over? I did sand them over a little bit on, on the ones on the bottom there where I thought you might see them, but I don't think you are going to see them at all. So that shouldn't be too much of a worry. So that's as far as I've got on the chassis. Uh, I've only done it that far because now uh, I want to paint it. Uh, I'm going to get in the black paint like it says. I, I think I might do a little bit of weathering, a bit a little, uh, just a, a tiny bit of, you know, road dust, uh, a little bit of rust here and there, just to, you know, just for something for myself to do because this is a very, very basic kit. Um, Revel have got it as a level three. Now, as I understand it, uh, they do their levels by how many parts are in the kit. Uh, there's 102 parts in this kit, so they said it's a level three kit, but really, there's not a lot, you know, that's going to worry the modeler of any skill level uh, beginner. The expert level is just going to I think they'd probably find this kit a bit of a bore and just use it as, like I said, as a carcass for something to do scratch building with. But I say, if you've never done a model kit before and you're into heavy metal and you want to do this, and all you're going to do is build it and slap the decals on, you're not even going to bother painting it, which would be fine if you're just going to put it up uh, on a shelf. That's all you need to do. That'd be fine. But uh, I say, you really do need to get these uh, sus suspension bars on properly or your wheels won't look right and it's going to make your, your model tip skew with. So just a little bit of trial and error there and it shouldn't be any problem. Uh, now the only other thing I did do was, uh, I think these are the fuel tanks these and they're made with those horrible, horrible chrome pots. Model makers, why? Tamir, Ravel, Airfix, Tacom, you all do it. You put these god awful chrome painted parts on. And what I have real big umbrage were with them are for one, that looks like a toy to me. That doesn't look like it's come off a model. That looks like it's come off a toy. And for two, if I can get it there, look at that god awful join line there. That's going all the way round. You are going to see it. And if you fill it, you've still got to paint it and it's going to look like 
you've got a, a different colored line going down there so I'm gonna have to fill this sand over it and then I'm going to uh, prime prime this and repaint it silver myself because uh, although that join there and that join line there they are going to be on the top and the bottom you're not really going to see them if unless you really look but the ones on the end are going to stick out like a sore thumb model makers please just put them in the gray plastic or whatever color plastic you've done the model in and let those modelers paint them for ourselves because we all hate this um just a word for anybody who's not made a model before and you're coming along these bits now they've all been coated in this horrible silver paint whatever it is when you come in to glue it you've got to scrape this silver paint off else your pieces will not glue together properly try and get them off the pins as well because the pins won't go into the holes because they are caked in this silver paint so you're gonna to have to do a little bit of work there just to make sure that these go together properly uh, and even now like I say on this one that is there's a massive gap there on this joint so that's gonna to have to be filled so if I had some paint stripper these would be going into the paint stripper I ain't got any so I'm just gonna uh, prime them in white and then paint them silver again with the silver paint that I've got so there we go uh, so that's as far as I've got now so I'm going to go away I've got three of these to prime and paint I'm going to get them all done and then I will be going on to the wheels which are there are going to be quite a few of um, I think uh, looking at those parts there they're going to be glued together so I'm going to glue them those together and then paint them so I can get rid of the join line around the middle to the tires there so uh, there we go that's that I think they are all the oh hang on a minute no I may have got that wrong I think that's double tires isn't it so no I'm going to be all right it's to I thought there was they were doing like like they do on the airplanes you know airplane kits where they've got the wheels and you have to glue the wheels together no they're not so you've got uh, double tires on there double wheels mm -hmm. so scratch that bit so i will be just uh painting them uh painting the hubs separately so they're gonna have the uh they're painted white then i can do either a matte or a, a, a satin varnish on the tires or gloss on the hubs and take it from there and then after that's painted I can stick them on there and that will all be there for vlog number two and like I said before I've got six of these to make so that's going to be six lots of filling and priming and la di da di da but uh, I say nothing to worry about oh I've just noticed on here as well um, just there this is where the toy element comes into it again as well there's a little bar that you put into that there but you don't glue it because it's got to that's where the trailer attaches and it's got to go up and down like that moves backwards and forwards however it tells you not to glue that bit obviously the bar but you need to glue that bit onto the bar what I suggest is get that little plastic bar into position first because you need to really push down it's a click fit and it's a really hard click fit as well you've not got much purchase anywhere because you don't want to be pushing on your suspension bars or you're going to be snapping them so you've got to somehow get your finger under there and then click it into place and then put this on top there is a little pin on there so you'll know where to go so i just to put a little dab of glue into the pin hole and uh, then just glue it on top of there so leaving that free to go backwards and forwards like that it's not much movement it's not great but that's what they tell you what to do and i don't want to glue it in place just in case uh, it makes an issue for the trailer so that's another thing we've got to look for so like i say after that i've got loads of wheels to do I've got loads of those to do so uh, 
that will be on vlog number two. I look forward to seeing you then. Many, many thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and to ring the little notification bell.